What is going on guys, in today's video I will show you the best endgame, wand and sword with shield build in Throne of Liberty. So in this guide I will show you a fully max setup with the best possible tier 1 gear, traits, masteries, skill rotations and everything else. And the best part about this is that for every single build choice I will explain my reasons, also how and where to get this powerful gear. And just overall you will be able to see what a fully maxed tier 1 character will look like and what at the end game you can achieve as well. So if you wanna use the best build in the game, then let's get right into it. This paladin setup is very unique, in the sense that we are going to be a tank that can heal at the same time. Players usually prefer just to go healer or tank separately. But the question is, what happens when you combine all the roles together? Well, we get this monster that can tank and heal at the same time, while still doing CC and big AoE damage. I personally haven't ever died even once in this build, so if you are ready to not even notice the enemy hits and heal more than any other healer then this is the build for you. So let's move over to the setup. For the choice of weapons we are going with the wand and the sword and shield. And first of all we have our skills. So for defensive skill we use the shield survival technique, while for active skills we get the shield strike, Provoking Roar, Shield Throw, Counter Barrier, Stalwart Bastion, Touch of Despair, Swift Healing, Blessed Barrier, Invincible Wall, A Shot at Victory, Curse Explosion and Time for Punishment. As you can see from the gameplay, I don't have all of these same skill icons on my bar. It is because the skill icons will change depending on our specialization setup. So our Shield Strike will turn into the Piercing Strike, and A Shot at Victory will turn into Annihilation Blade. Then for passives, we want to go with the Resilient Mind, Iage's Shield, Spectrum of Agony, Vrad's Beacon, Devotion and Emptiness, Selfless Soul, Noble Revival and Impenetrable. Then as for skill upgrade priority, for active skills we mainly want to focus on the Shield Strike, Touch of Despair, Shield Survival Technique, Swift Healing and Curse Explosion. While for passive skills we focus mainly on the Impenetrable, Devotion and Emptiness, Vrad's Beacon, Resilient Mind and Selfless Soul. And then for the rest of your skills, they're not as important, so just upgrade them as you progress through the game. Also, remember to always upgrade all of your skills to blue first before moving on to the purple. Next we have the skill specialization, and for the shield strike we select the piercing strike and aggro increased. Then for shield throw we get the aggro increase and consecutive use. Then for stalwart bastion we don't select anything. Then for swift healing get the healing chance first and consecutive use. For invincible wall get the targets expand and skill distance increased. For curse explosion get the damage increase. Then for provoking roar get the effect duration and cooldown reduction. For counter barrier select the cooldown. For touch of despair get all three. So radius increased, effect duration and curse. Then for blessed barrier and time for punishment don't get anything. And finally for a shot of victory select the annihilation blade. Next we have weapon mastery. And this is how it should look like for the sword and shield. So take a look at the middle and get only the skillful block. Then now go to the bottom and select everything from the max health until the steely physique. And now lastly go all the way to the top and get that entire row. And then again this is how it should look like for the wand. So you again start in the middle and get these 4 nodes. Then afterwards go to the top and get that entire row. And then last but not least go all the way to the bottom and select these last 3 nodes. Next let's take a look at our gear. And if you are looking for a full green or blue gear setup then I recommend for you to watch my previous build videos. So first off we are using the Karnix Nether Blade with traits like the max health, hit chance and heavy attack chance. All gear should be at its max level and you can get this items crafting recipe from the Dead's Abyss. Next we have the Excavator's Mysterious Spectre with max health, hit chance and heavy attack chance. You can get it by defeating the Excavator 9. Next we have the Shadow Harvester Mask with mana regen, range evasion and cooldown speed. Because we are using two pieces of the death set, so you will get plus 14% critical damage and you can get it by defeating the Adentus. Next we have the Supreme Devotion with mana regen, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. You can get it from the Cave of Destruction. Next we have the Shock Commander Plate Armor with max health, melee evasion and ranged evasion. You can get it from bunch of purple armor chests or by defeating the Demon Hoof Shaman. 
Next we have the Ascendant Guardian Gloves with max mana, melee evasion and added attack speed. You can get it from Butcher's Canyon. Next we have the Shadow Harvester Trousers with max mana, mana regen and ranged evasion. You can get it by defeating the Juno Boat. Next we have the Shark Commander Sabatons with max health, melee evasion and ranged evasion. As we're using two pieces of this set, so you will get plus 18 to damage reduction. And you can get it by defeating the Kova Zen. Next up we have the Color of Decimation with max health, skill damage boost and buff duration. You can as well get it by defeating the same Kovazan. Next we have the Ancient Sorodoma Bracers with mana region, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. You can get it from purple armor chests or from the Tarant's Isle. Next we have Etched Alabaster Band with max health, skill damage boost and buff duration. You can get it from the Precious Blessing Pouch or by defeating the Demon Hoof Shaman or the Chakr. Next we have Sapphire Dimensional Band with max health, skill damage boost and buff duration. You can get it from purple armor chests. And finally we have the Belt of the Bloodlust with max health, skill damage resistance and debuff duration. You can get it by defeating Aridus or by opening purple armor chests or the pouches. Last but not least, if at this current moment you only have blue gear then don't worry, because that gear doesn't really matter and you will soon enough start changing it for the purple pieces. The setup that I showed is the best current gear that anyone can farm, but no matter what gear you choose this build will still work fine, but this setup is just an example of what the best of the best items will look like. Next up let's take a look at our gear upgrades. This game doesn't have a very typical gear progression. So by this I mean that you will have to upgrade pretty much anything you get. So you'll go from grey to green to blue and finally to purple. No matter at which stage of progression you're watching this video, just keep upgrading your equipment to their max level. And then when you get better gear just transfer the experience from the old one to the new one. As for my gear recommendations, when you reach level 50, just farm accessible gear by doing open world dungeons. Also you want to extract trades from gear for Lucent. And on top of that, you will need to turn important purple gear that you don't use into lithographs and then sell them on the action house. Last but not least, for your trades just prioritize the ones that give you the highest damage. And don't forget that you can acquire new trades by using the trade unlock stone. Next up we have the stats and depending on your gear you should adjust them accordingly. The goal for your endgame build is to reach 70 strength, 30 dexterity, 30 wisdom and 30 perception. All of these milestones will give us extremely good damage, healing and survivability. And now finally we have come to the gameplay. And at the start I will show you a bunch of different rotations. And then at the end I will summarize your overall playstyle and what you want to keep doing. So first off we have our engage combo. Which we start by using the provoking roar, then the shield throw. Then piercing strike, then touch of despair. Then time for punishment and then we finish it off with the annihilation blade. This rotation allows you to quickly engage the boss by applying the taunt and then using a bunch of quick damage skills to help you keep doing a bunch of damage and holding the aggro. Next we have our main DPS rotation in which we use the annihilation blade then touch of despair then piercing strike and then we finish it off with the shield throw. As we have very few DPS skills so we mainly want to use this rotation after the first engage combo and then always whenever it comes off cooldown. And the idea behind this one is to use the Annihilation Blade for the damage increase and then throw as much damage at the boss as possible. The next up we have our second DPS rotation, which is meant for more burst damage. So this time again we start with the Annihilation Blade, then we use the Shield Throw, then Piercing Strike, then Touch of Despair, and then we finish it off with the Curse Explosion. Overall this is the best combo to deal as much damage as possible, but as we are primarily a tank and a healer, so this is not our main priority. And now finally we've come to the last part, where I explain all of our defensive options. These are your main tools that we should prioritize all of our attention on. So we got Stalwart Bastion, Shield Survival Technique, Invincible Wall and the Counter Barrier. All of these skills will protect your party with buffs, shields and other damage reduction. And they should be used depending on the situation. While on the other hand we have the Blessed Barrier and the Swift Healing. Blessed Barrier I usually save for emergency heals when my party gets in real trouble. And then the rest of the time I just keep using the Swift Healing whenever it comes off cooldown. If I'm playing in a group with a healer, then I just focus on defending my teammates and healing myself. 
But if I'm solo or in a group and without a healer, then I focus on tanking while healing the guys that are the lowest HP. And that's about it. So, if you enjoyed this video, click like, subscribe and comment. If you are interested in more content, then check out my channel and I will see you in the next one. So take it easy, peace.